pursue this um, border essentially on the main appeal, which we believe was ripe for hearing. When this case came up on the 27th of April, Thursday, 27th of April, the Supreme Court ordered the federal government to file their brief of argument as appellant within six days. They had asked for five days, but the Supreme Court was gracious enough to give them six days. They did not file until they did not file that brief until Tuesday. Even when they filed it on Tuesday, I discovered that the brief was 53 pages more than the threshold of the 40 pages allowed by the Supreme Court. I'm not the kind of lawyer to embarrass opponents. So I told the Supreme Court, I mean, I told Ghazali SM from the Federal Ministry of Justice and his junior, I called them and then also wrote to them that the practice and convention at the Supreme Court is that a brief should not exceed 40 pages. So they had to file another one on Wednesday, which they served us late on Thursday. We had only the weekend to prepare our own respondents' brief, which we duly filed on Tuesday in the morning and served them. So from all intents and purposes, the appeal was ripe for hearing. But today, the federal government came and said they wanted to file a reply brief. I told their counsel, you can even, these points of law you are showing me which you want to file formally, you can stand up and say them orally, verbally, and we will not oppose. In any event, you are saying we raise a preliminary objection in our brief. It was raised in our brief, not as a separate document. But I believe that their own intention was to stall the proceedings because he said he had the instruction of the Attorney General that he must reply to it. I said, no one is saying you should not reply. But it doesn't have to be in a written form. You can reply orally. We have all done it now and again by replying orally, verbally. He will not do that. So the Supreme Court said, in order not to show them out, they will give them a short time to file the reply within two days. Then I begged the Supreme Court, I pleaded with the Supreme Court to give us the shortest possible date. Even this month or early next month. But they looked at their calendar and they are docket that is pitiably full. It's so unfortunate this is the busiest Supreme Court in the world because all manners of cases come here and politicians will fight themselves dirty and they will all end up here. And even the smallest case about stealing a piece of fish or disagreeing over between a, hus a disagreement between a husband and a wife, we end up at the Supreme Court. That is why I've crusaded again and again over the years that we should have hierarchy of course within states so that each state of the federation should have its own hierarchy of course from magistrate or customary court to high court to court of appeal to Supreme Court. This is how it happens in the United States of America from where we borrow our presidentialism. But here, the smallest case we go from the smallest village and end up at the Supreme Court. And all the politicians who will fight dirty, we quarrel, we not put their ass together, all of them will come here. So when the Supreme Court is beginning to have like 19 cases in one day, like a magistrate court, then you know there's a problem. So they looked at their dockets and discovered that the next available date is after the vacation, which will be 14th of September. Having indicated, I pleaded with the Supreme Court to allow any of the two motions which are still existing that we filed. One is motion for bail, and the other one is motion to transfer him from his current DSS Gulag. I don't call it detention, it's Gulag, to Kujie Correctional Center, which 
the federal government indicated that they had they are also opposing i made it clear to the supreme court that my fear is that i do not want now the canoe to die in detention i gave the example of Abu abubakar former governor of kogu state he was my client and I continued to warn the prosecution that time to hurry up and carry out this trial. Because if this man died, then there will be no person to try. To try. And when he eventually died, the first time we go to court, I asked them, can you now go and try a dead person in the grave? You cannot. So our criminal justice system says, come and stand trial. What does it connote? Come and stand trial means you should be well and heavy enough to stand a trial. He didn't say come and sit down trial or come and lie down trial or come and prostrate trial or come and kneel down trial. He says come and stand trial. So you should be heavy enough to stand. That is what it connotes. So I told the Supreme Court that my worry is that I would not want Nabikano to die in DSS Gulag because of their delay. They have been delaying this matter. This trial started since December 2015. They went from four counts to seven counts to 50 counts. Amendment. They did in all seven amendments. If you were sure a person had committed a crime, why were you engaging in seven amendments? And of course, the last 15 counts, I, I, I went after the jugular. The Federal High Court struck out eight of the 15 counts based on a preliminary objection. We took the remaining seven counts to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal, on the 10th of October, 2022, struck out the remaining seven counts and further ordered that Nam the Kanu was discharged and that he should never again be detained and he should never again be tried on those offenses for which he was standing trial before his brutal, excruciating, torturous, extraordinary rendition from Kenya on the 27th of June 2021 after he was literally kidnapped and ki uh, captured on the 19th of June when he went to Kenya voluntarily as a British citizen and was kept in a decrepit, non-government uh, 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 place for about eight days before they flew him back to Nigeria. Based on that, the Court of Appeal held that even in arresting a person within Nigeria, you still have to go through the provisions of Agia, like Section 8, which say you must treat a suspect or a defendant with humanity. You must not subject him to degrading and inhuman treatment. Section 113 of the of the of the Aja is there. Section 94 of the Aja is there. All of them say you must comply with both local and international laws in trying a suspect. They did not. They did not subject themselves to extradition proceedings as provided for by the Extradition Act. Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. And there is also the doctrine of specialty that you can only try a person, even if they, extra, even if they had engaged in lawful extradition proceedings, which they did not do, you can only try a person for the offense he was standing. I mean, you cannot try a person for the offense he was standing trial before his extradition, uh, extrajudicial or extraordinary rendition. It has to be a new offense for which you are extraditing the person. But they didn't do all this. So the Court of Appeal saw through the federal government's facade and masquerade and tore it to shreds and discharged Namikano, ordered that he be not detained and ordered that henceforth he should never be tried. But the federal government surprisingly went to the same Court of Appeal, but another panel this time, to ask for a stay of execution. The federal government who was staying execution of his citizens, his own citizens' liberty, where America will go out of his way to another country to go and, and take out 
from that country a wrongfully detained person. The federal government of Nigeria stayed the execution of the liberty of its own citizen. And they have been delaying this matter. They filed an appeal since 18th of October 2022. They, they, they will file some papers, they will not serve us. We will discover them by ourselves. We had to file a series of motions for uh, accelerated hearing. That was what led to all these motions for bail and motion to transfer him, which again, unfortunately, the Supreme Court could not take today. They are of the opinion that Nam the Kanu will not die by the grace of God. And they, they even prayed with me that he will not die. They are of the opinion that it is better to go for the main appeal once and for all than through this motion for bail or motion to transfer him from um, uh, DSS Gulag to Kujie Correctional Center. So by the grace of God, let me say this and say this very clearly. The federal government can run, but it cannot hide. It can run, no, but it can never hide. The reason is that you cannot cover the sun with your palm. You can't cover the sun with your palm. And no one can hide behind a finger. Because the federal government has brought in a maggots infested piece of firewood into his home. It has asked for visitation by a colony of lizards. So, why are they running from here in the matter? But I can assure you that before you know what is happening, <laughs> September 14, he's here, it's around the corner. And this man, by God's grace, God, as usual, will do what he knows best. Do justice to all manners of people. God will ensure that Nam the Kanu is discharged, acquitted, and released from the jack Buddhism of the federal government because he has not committed any, any crime and the two lower courts have said he did not commit any crime. And this is what you call concurrent judgment. It is difficult, nigh impossible, near impossible for the Supreme Court to tamper with concurrent judgment of the two lower courts, trial court and court of appeal, except where you show that great miscarriage of justice has happened. And there is none in this case. So now the canoe will be free, free and free. When Moses told Pharaoh, the Egyptian king, let my people go, he will not allow them to go. His ears were deafened. Exodus 8, 19. You will see the finger of God where Pharaoh could not get the magicians to conjure the little gnat, lies, the little lies on the head. And the magicians told Pharaoh, look, we have been conjuring everything, blood, frogs, all this thing, but this lies, this little lies, the smallest, we can't. This shows that God's finger is on this matter. God's finger. Exodus 8, 19. So let this man go. They will not allow the Israelites go. What happened? We saw the consequences of a deafened Egyptian king when God parted the Red Sea for the Israelites to pass through. And the Egyptians were pursuing with chariots and charioteers, horses. What happened? God closed it up and drowned all of them. I pray that the federal government should not because of one citizen, one innocent citizen, whose organization, IPO, founded in 2012, was a whistleblowing, beret-wearing, marching on the street organization, never violent group, to, be, to bring a bigger problem for them internationally. Because it was not until the federal government descended on his house on the 14th, his ancestral, his ancestral home at Afarauku, Ibeku, near Umuahia Abia State, between 10th and 14th of September 2017, trying to extrajudicially kill and annihilate Inamikanu that he fled by the whiskers of his teeth and 28 innocent Nigerians 
were brutally and gruesomely and grisly murdered on that occasion. He fled, and as soon as he got to Israel, he quickly deposed an affidavit that, look, these are the circumstances under which I fled. I'm ready to come back if the federal government can grant and the court can guarantee me safety. And they never guaranteed. So they now continue to say, you know, they cannot jump bay. You, you don't jump bay when you were to be killed and you fled for your dear life. So by the grace of God, at the end of the day, justice will be done in this matter. And Nabi Kanu will be a free man. Amen. I have told Buhari, President Buhari, when I delivered the, when I delivered the Uzuko Umuna lecture at Enugu, uh, penultimate Friday, uh, which was on the 28th of April, I begged and pleaded with President Buhari on bended nails that he should release Namdi Kanu immediately because it's not a threat to national security. And I'm now again praying President Buhari on my bended knees once more to release Namdi Kanu today. People will clap for him. Even though he has not achieved much in his eight years of a disastrous outing as president, at least history will remember him that he did one good thing, releasing Nnamdi Kanu, showing that the Igbos are not a dot in the Nigerian circle. That of the 374 ethnic groups in Nigeria that speak over 350 languages, according to Professor Onigo Otite in his demographic survey of Nigeria, that the Igbos actually constitute the cementing, the binding wire, the cementing force the Aradite that holds the other tribes together. Because in any part of Nigeria, when you go to a community after the indigenous, the next most populated community are the Igbos. So the Igbos, I believe, believe more in Nigeria than any other tribe, any other ethnic group in Nigeria. So what Buhari should do is to release this man. And then history will remember him for that. If for any reason he does not release him. The next president to even begin to rule at all, to govern a people at all with peace and tranquility, with mutual respect and egalitarianism, with social justice, his first national broadcast, whosoever the president will be, the first national broadcast must incorporate immediate and unconditional release of Nambi Kanu. Although there are still election petitions against Tinibu, Shiwaju, Bola Tinibu, but the constitutional provision is that a president, I mean, Buhari's term lapses on 29th May, 29th of May, 2023. That means a president, somebody has to be sworn in. I'm a constitutional lawyer. I know that that's the constitutional provision. So even if the person sworn in is a lame duck president, groggy, dudley, wobbly, fumbly, I pray, not crumbly, at least we will say he's president of Nigeria. The first maiden broadcast that he must have, he must incorporate the immediate and unconditional release of Nnamdi Kano. And somehow, that will give him some traction. And Nigerians will clap for him, saying, oh, you have started on a good note. And that will make him generate some sympathy, if not empathy, from a large spectrum of the nation, particularly the Indigo race, the Alaybo. He will generate some sympathy. So uh, that is my advice. It's unsolicited advice. Nobody has paid me for it as a lawyer. But I believe that this advice will help whichever government is going to come into uh, power on the 29th of May, 2023. Yes, thank you.